So I've literally heard like dozens of people come up to me and message me and say, Hey Rafi, how did you start writing for Forbes? What, how did you do that? How'd you get mentioned in Forbes? How'd you do that? People literally have a dream, like a lifetime dream of being able to contribute to this publication called Forbes. And um, so after so many requests, so many questions about it, there was no option left for me except to actually create a document or an article or a website, I mean a video, and share with you guys exactly how I became a contributor to Forbes and how you can do the exact same thing. So how do you become a contributor to Forbes? What I can say about Forbes is that it's not something that's, I would say, is hard to achieve, but at the same time, it's not something that's easy to achieve either. Hello, guys. My name is Rafi Chowdhury. I'm the founder and CEO of Influencer Spotlight. Influencer Spotlight is a training and coaching program where we teach you everything about how to become a contributor and how to get featured in and mentioned in big name publications around the web and how to grow and leverage your personal brand to pretty much financial freedom of all sorts of imaginations. Let's begin. Loading, loading, loading for days, days at a time. So Forbes, if you don't know already, everybody knows Forbes, is a very well-renowned publication. It's an American business journal circulated bi-weekly. So there's a print and there's an online version. It includes original articles on economics, industry, financing, marketing, and etc. So it's a very business-oriented publication. Forbes also gives accounts on related topics, for example, technology, infrastructures, science, political affairs, and law. Its headquarters is found in New Jersey, and the magazine is well known for its lists rankings comprising of the richest Americans, the Forbes 400, world's top company, the Forbes Global 2000, list of world's billionaires. And one that I forgot to mention is Forbes 30 under 30 list, Forbes 40 under 40 list. And the slogan for Forbes magazine is the capitalist tool. So how do you become a contributor on Forbes? Contributor as in how do you become a community writer, a columnist on Forbes? Here's what you need to know. If you're an executive, an entrepreneur, or an expert, you can get into top magazine like Forbes. And then eventually, by writing on these big name publications, you can influence an entire industry sometimes. Uh, and the reliability one receives for writing these magazines. <clears throat> uh, the, the credibility that you receive from writing these publications obviously helps you and your business as well and you as a professional because it's taken very seriously when you write for big name publications like that. However, contributors at Forbes are unpaid writers, meaning Forbes does not pay their contributing writers unless it is a staff writer. And in this case, we are talking about a community contributor and not a staff writer. So they don't pay staff, uh, community contributors, they don't pay field experts, um, they don't really pay their community experts with any kind of day jobs. <clears throat> and they don't get paid for like regular employees at Forbes. Um, I started contributing at Forbes. This is actually not correct. I need to change that. There's a typo there. Oops. Back in Forbes uh, for 2010, but I started contributing there last year. And like I said, it took me six years of uh, working and, 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 and really being able to <clears throat> um, 
you know, keep my basically build up my writing portfolio enough to where I could pitch a big name publications like that. And uh, so now I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. So what we're going to talk about today is connecting with editors. You will need to love writing if you want to ever write anywhere, really. You need to research your information and the niche where you're going to be contributing. You need to read the pu posts published on Forbes. You need to talk with other people who write at Forbes. You need to choose your focus and which section of Forbes you're going to be writing in. You need to think of a very, very solid pitch that you're going to make to Forbes. And you're going to learn how to write a pitch, which I have the entire video detailed on that particular topic. And Forbes has other sorts of different requirements that you need to know as well. Don't underestimate a Forbes editor. These guys are super choosy and extra busy. I should have added extra, extra busy. But despite all this, they still get time to read other publications and remember a good post. So if you guys have been following me on social media or on the web, you know that I write consistently on my own blog, rafichowdhury.com, and my other marketing blog, chowdhurysdigital.com. And also I publish on LinkedIn Pulse a lot. Most of my articles used to rank in Google, and they still do because my content is just amazing. Um, so... Plenty of people obviously started noticing, you know, putting my blog followers started noticing that I write for Forbes. And eventually I ended up, when I got my contributor account, uh, it was pretty much, you know, just a ton of writing, writing experiences. And part of the reason for that is because I publish all the time. I write all the time. Like five, you know, high quality articles. Um, not exactly daily, but on a, definitely on a weekly basis, I write about 12, 13 articles per week on both of my blogs combined, plus other my other columns. And um, you can do something similar if it's something unique that you're sharing uh, and it's something that allows people to learn, you know, things that you're an expert on. So Forbes editors don't just choose anybody to write for Forbes. They like unique and industry-related stuff, which shows the why and the how to make an impact. They want very specific expertise. They don't want something generic advice. They want specific and actionable advice, articles that uh, are actionable, articles that are very specific in particular. <clears throat> so there's a video that I have. Um, Actually, sorry, this is an upcoming video of mine, which I'll where I'll talk about exactly how you need to impress an editor and what, what things you need to do to get those guys to really like you. But just long story short, you want editors to really be your best friends. And most editors typically have a – there is a lot of similarity in what they're looking for. They're obviously different people. But in terms of their criteria for what they choose to accept into these big name publications – you will see that there's a lot of similarity between editors of different publications. <clears throat> so they're not going to allow you to publish any kind of advertorial materials, anything that's promotional in nature. So be extremely careful with what you write. Most publications will let you mention your company or will may let you link back out to a blog post on your blog, but they typically won't allow you to link to uh, or mention for the most part, you know, co other companies and other businesses, if you're affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. So you obviously have to have a love for writing. If money is something that you want, then Forbes is not really the place for you. You cannot really make a, like I said, you they don't really pay their writers. So um, accepting money, um, you know, it just doesn't make any sense because they don't really pay. And money shouldn't be your focal point when you start to contribute because if you write for money, you won't write very well either. 
That's another thing. So you'll have to write promotional stuff and then accept it. And furthermore, this will not get you the results you want. If you don't have the passion for writing, it'll turn into a huge burden rather than a blessing. Like you have to contribute. You have to, you have to want to contribute there. The mainstream of those who succeed as contributors like to write, and they write a lot. So you have to prove to an editor that you deserve to get into Forbes. Proving to a Forbes editor that you've written uh, three to four blog posts is not really going to cut it. Okay, you got to show them that you have been writing for a long time and you have written for other big name publications as well. That you're truly an expert authority in this particular topic that fits into what they want. You know, they share. But if you show that you've written over a hundred blog posts and several, you don't have to be necessarily be several, you know hundreds, but you have to have published in several other places and, and write on obviously on your own blog. Um, then your chance of getting into Forbes is much better. One of the things that Forbes want to know wants to know is whether you will deliver a piece every week or not. That's approximately 52 articles in a year. Uh, they typically take longer than a week, obviously, to publish. So you're gonna want to make sure that you know you're consistently able to put out at least in one article every three to four weeks for sure. So it's a lot of unpaid work. Obviously, you don't get paid for it. Um, can you live up to this? Is, is is the question. If you you know do become a contributor, will you actually take your time and contribute there? Your writing needs to be universal and well researched, so anybody can read and understand it. Only then will you you know potentially have a shot have a shot at becoming a contributor at Forbes, and they really want to see that you've invested your time and energy to actually take your time and to actually want to write there. As you prepare to submit your article to Forbes, make sure that it meets their guidelines. Any article that does not meet their guidelines will just get rejected and they're probably, most more than likely, they will not even respond to you. So keep it short. Forbes doesn't really allow articles more than a thousand words. So keep it less than a thousand words. Articles should not be shorter than 600 words, however. And speak from your experience, so have a personal touch to it based on your industry and expertise. And Forbes readers crave your unique insight based on what you've encountered in your own business. So choose a topic on which you are the most knowledgeable and share actionable advice. Things that people can just read, turn off their computer, and go and implement. So don't really pitch an article that's like very generic and sounds salesy or like there's promotional in nature. They don't really accept those as pitches. They won't even respond to you typically. And write about your industry and not why your product or service is the best. And that's just poor content marketing anyway. You know, so just to write about your own product all the time, it just doesn't make any sense. You want to ideally educate your audience on your industry and then your product message gets carried across with it anyway. Any promotional links embedded in the content will be removed. Um, so don't put any promotional links, you know, when you pitch them. Cite your resources. Obviously, if you take a quote from somewhere or you mention someone, make sure you tell, you know, where that came from. For any statistics to your reference, please link back to the original source. Uh, whatever you got it from, you know, scholarly journal or, you know, wherever. Um, and you can also talk with Forbes editors. Uh, you can look at their calendar for topics of ideas. So they put out a calendar that you can see to see, look to see what they're actually interested in, and you know the time of the year. And if you're, you know, that's a good way to kind of see like what they're actually looking for if you don't know what to write about. So study the publication, know where you're gonna pitch, pick which section you want to write for, and look to see what they have in that calendar. <clears throat> so this is what I do, and you can use it too. Your article needs to be valuable and represent your best work. Forbes partners are really, really selective. They have tons of other websites that they're partnered with and some their articles get shared on other sites as well. They want high quality articles that offer distinctive and specific insights and advice from industry experts. They don't want any generic tips. They don't want listicles. 
avoid 10 general sales tips or 25 things learned by age 25, et cetera, things like that. You want very specific stuff, like very, 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 very specific niche-based, um, insightful, actionable content with you from your personal experience. Include your first-hand experiences and results. This is why publishers love uh, content from the YEC, which is the Young Entrepreneur Council. Um, it's written by a business owner in the trenches, not a reporter or a writer. So it provides a unique insider's look at your industry and where it's headed, as well as how to uh, give advice based on your particular skill set or your particular business, your particular team, you know, your hiring practices, experience raising money, all that kind of stuff. Things that you just couldn't Google search and find out. Things that come from experience only. It should be immediately clear why you're an expert on the topic as soon as someone starts reading your article. Articles are an opportunity to establish credibility by mentioning your company and core expertise in a tactful way. Articles cannot be promotional, like I said before, but explaining who you are and why you're qualified to write uh, definitely sets the stage uh, for your reader. So you want to read the popular uh, articles. This will give you a really good idea of what works well on Forbes, what kind of content that you know tends to perform well. Uh, make sure that your content is applicable to the audience related to your chosen focus. So whichever you know target market you're going after, make sure that those guys are um, you know it, your article resonates with that audience. Explain how you did something versus like what to do. You know, don't give advice on things that you haven't done, but just talk about how you did something. For example, if you offer tips for improving a website, describe how you use each of these tips in your business and what the results were. Prove that your advice actually works. Your readers crave authentic insight, not a lecture. So if you don't want a sales pitch coming at you, if you want to learn something, then Forbes Partners and Forbes doesn't really want that either. So be transparent about references to your company services, clients, etc. Any article that attempts to promote or sell or market to readers is they're probably not going to accept it. They're going to delete it. They're not going to respond to you. And with a strong note and include a short conclusion reiterating your main points. So your structure in general should basically be some sort of an overview that kind of explains the problem or what you're going to talk about in the article. Some sort of bullet or numbered points uh, that are kind of like your actual helpful hints and advices and you know in numbers maybe and then underneath each number each advice actionable item you should basically put some sort of an example of how you did this in your business or someone else did it maybe and then you should have some sort of wrap up or conclusion that kind of ties everything together and gives the main points back in one small paragraph So if you're public, you know, your if your article has been published anywhere else, include a link to its original source. Typically, they don't really want any published content. There are some exceptions, but 99% of the time, 95% of the time, they're not going to accept something that's been published elsewhere on the web. If your article is originally from your blog or another outlet, include the original link to it. Um, it'll still obviously get edited probably, so it may change by the time it gets published from Forbes. Um, so make sure that you put your, you know, your your sources should be linked out to where where they came from. Uh, provide when you do linking, try to link out to like corporate, you know, collaborative studies, stats, quotes, or research materials, and not to businesses. Uh, sources should be primarily, you know, primary sources. Uh, for example, you don't really want media articles or blog posts referring to a study. You want to actually code the study. All data should be recent and within the last two years is typically a good rule of thumb. So reach out to people who already write for Forbes and offer to help them out with their uh, article. Offer to help them with their research, their discussions that they're gonna talk about, analysis for their articles. This will give you more understanding into how the process works and you'll also be able to pitch yourself helping other Forbes writers will help you in putting together the pieces you know um, you might actually end up getting cited an article or two with this tactic because they again want you know people generally end up mentioning you if you actually help them out a whole bunch 
and it'll help you when the time comes for you to pitch an article as well because you will know a lot of insider secrets from these guys. So make sure you know which section of Forbes you want to contribute to. Are you going to write for the entrepreneur section? Are you going to write for the lifestyle? Are you going to, you know, are you an expert on CMO network, you know, marketing? I mean, what, like you have to figure out like what, you know, like what is it that your expertise on and choose that section, target section on Forbes. There are different sections in Forbes and each has a different editor. So choose one very carefully, one that you are an expert on. Because if you try to get into many, you won't get into any of them. So it's kind of like the old saying, you know, chase two rabbits, catch none. So you want to go for one specific target section and you want to pitch and do your research for pitching that particular section and that editor. Don't stop at selecting a section. You also need a subject within you need a subject within that unit. You'll need to focus on small business, um, HR or tech, you know, VC funding, these kind of topics. And if you pitch yourself just as a marketer, HR, or VC, it's too unclear. So you need to, you know, focus and, and have a very specific area where you're going to be pitching in a specific topic that you want to write about. It's like a building with too many rooms and you need to choose the best and should have all the accessories you're going to want to need. So if your content discusses the business interests of yours, example, a former company or commercial venture, a business you partner or investor in, a product, service, or client uh, slash consumer, you must clearly explain your affiliation with that uh, product or service or company or individual and disclose any or actual or potential conflicts of interest to readers than text itself. Forbes reserves the right to not publish or, or delete any content that appears to be self-promotional in nature which is against Forbes Community and Editorial Guide. My battery is running low. So content that's commissioned by a brand or a vendor or created on behalf of such a business interest, often described as sponsored content, it's considered promotional, is not accepted for publication. They reserve to write deleting content that appears to be promotional or advertorial in nature. So just don't go out there and pitching yourself and your clients and stuff like that. Finally, you may not use Forbes publishing opportunities to solicit or accept free or discounted goods or services under any circumstances. Create three posts that you think are valuable on being on Forbes and get super personal in those posts. So this is how to write a great pitch. Be open, share secrets, give your best tips, offer great value, and share your encounters where it may help others. Do not make it about yourself. It's not about you. It's about the person who reads it and what they want. Write for the reader and not don't think about the self-promotional aspect or your benefit of it. Just try to help out people. Check your spelling and grammar. You can use the tool like Grammarly, for example, if English is not your native tongue. Even if it is, you can use it. If you need help, you can hire, you know, obviously a copywriter or like someone to check your work. Um, there's different applications like Ginger and Grammarly. They're free and will make the writing super easy for you. If not, hire a writer and explain what you want written and how. Or you can come to me and this is, I have an entire course on how to teach this. And if you're taking my course, you're probably watching this video right now. How to write a great pitch, part two. Avoid keyword links, for example. So XYZ Company wrote a great blog post on this. That's not a good way. Instead, you should write my company XYZ wrote a blog post on the topic. So talk about you know things that you've done and not other people. SEO best practices are important. Better way to write this is, if you'd like to learn more about SEO practices, I've written several posts on the topic here. One well, of the best companies doing this today is XYZ. Is not a good way to put it. Instead, you can say, I work with XYZ, which offers this service. Other companies offering similar services include blah, blah, blah. Your article needs to be detailed about things that can help and how readers can use them to get benefit.
So Forbes has lots of different little uh, requirements. You need to do your research, check the accuracy of the facts, you know, make sure that you're not taking other people's pictures and stuff like that without their permission. Uh, again, links and, and very, you know, be careful with those. Don't link out to blog posts and things like that. Link out to research that's less than uh, two years old. Um, and for direct quotes, they have some specific ways that you need to do that as well. Um, identifying your source depends on how they were obtained. Direct quotes, you need to, you know, you have to get them basically from, you know, stories that you actually personally were part of or that you people that you've interviewed, etc. And be careful with the source. The director of uh, human resources at Forbes told me in an email, blah, blah, blah. Oops. And I said, mentioned in the beginning, it's not hard, but it's not really that easy either. There are a total of 1,500 contributors at Forbes on average. That might sound like a lot, but for every individual writing for Forbes, there are 1,000 who tried. <laughs> Again, tried and then failed. Most people fail because they don't organize when they pitch and they don't know how to pitch. And most pitches are very, very bad. If you follow the steps that I've guided, I've kind of outlined here, by now, you should already be better than you know most 99% of people that are probably looking to pitch Forbes. And in my next video, I'm going to be including other publications as well, how to get into each individual publication. And so they're all important, and you need to just basically follow all the guidelines. It's really simply, it's all there is to it. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you haven't signed up for my course yet, you need to do so. This, this course will teach you exactly how to do all of this hands-on, step-by-step with one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me. Thank you guys, and I'll see you guys at the next video.